Okay, the first step you should take before you drag the infield is to, is to go to the base areas, remove the bases, and put in a plug. Uh, there's different types. There's a mushroom plug which sticks up a little bit, and there's these whisker plugs that you can put in the hole, and then once you drag over it, these spring back up so you know right away where the base is. And the base is just pop right out of here. Then you just put that in the hole all the way. And then once you drive over that, you'll see. It's important to get the bases out because as you see, when people slide into the base, you get a buildup of material behind it and you get a low spot back here. So it's always good too to come by with a rake and try to move some of this material back into that area so you can get it all and alleviate this high spot that starts to form here around the base. Okay, one of the easiest way to mess up an infield's grade is, is by improper dragging techniques. Um, the first thing you should do, like we talked about earlier, is when you start your dragging, you should remove the bases so you can get rid of the, low, the high spots that form from sliding behind the base and the low spots that form from sliding in front of the base. Um, after that, there's a lot of different rules that I've always had that I think are important to follow. They're not my rules, but just general rules about dragging. Um, if your gate is down the first base side of the field, it's, it's very easy just to come in every day, drive through the gate, and start dragging at first base. But when you start the drag, if you look behind you and notice, the drag pulls material away from that spot. So if you start there every day, you're over time making yourself a low spot there. On the other side, if you, if you stop your drag at by first base every day, you're going to have a nice high spot as well. So it's important that you change where you start and where you stop your drag every time you drag. It's okay if you have a finished drag that you like to have every day, but make sure during the day or after a game you change the way you do it. Um, along, along with that, it's important that you don't go fast. If, if you notice, again, if you look behind you when you're dragging, the drag tends to throw material to the side. So I've always tried to maintain a one foot rule where I don't let anybody get within a foot of any of the turf clay interfaces just so that the material doesn't fly into the, into the edges there. And also when you drive too fast, you'll notice if the drag is not perfectly down, it, it starts to bounce and then it deposits the material in little piles as it's bouncing. Uh, that's very common when you when you go look at some high school park and recreation fields, even some college fields, where I know you oh, you have a lot of fields you have to do, so you're trying to get from one to the next in a short period of time. But it's it's crucial that you that you go slow and try to try to drag it the best that you can. Um, is also as far as that goes, you want to alternate your directions, uh, not even just your starting and stopping positions. You want to change the way you're dragging. So if you come in and just do your perimeters, you can do that. You can do your your circles. You can do your, your semi-circles or your, you, know, you can do any way you want to, but it's just important that you're constantly changing the way that you're dragging as well so you don't get high spots built up and, and low spots at the same time. As you can see here, we followed the one foot rule, so you can see there is, a, there is an edge that we have to come through either with a hand drag or a rake. Now I'm trying to rake parallel with the grass, because if you rake this way, you can see that I'm, I'm pulling material back and I don't want to throw that material into the edge. I mean, it's okay if you have a spot that you have to come back and hit to do that, but even if you're trying to rake your base lines, it's always a good idea to rake parallel, because over time, you, you, when you push and pull, you tend to dig a little bit too, and you start to make a little hole where water can stand pretty easily. So I always try to go parallel to my, to my turf clay interfaces and, and rake the areas up that way. But by doing this, I can, I'm not going fast, obviously. I'm not going to be throwing that material into the lip, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to do a nice finish on the back edge. 
During a, a baseball game, uh, at least at the major league level, the grounds crew comes out twice a game at the end of the third, at the end of the sixth inning uh, to drag the infield. And the reason we do that is just to try and take out any um, cleat marks, any bad ball hops that may occur. Uh, we try to minimize those as much as we can. There's all kinds of different drags out there that we use. 90% um, of the time we're going to use what we call a cocoa mop. Um, and it's almost like a, a welcome mat. You can see it's in front of someone's house. And uh, it's kind of a heavy uh, type mat that will really does a nice job of smoothing the infield back out and uh, giving it that finished look uh, right in the middle of the game. So, like I said, we'll do it twice a game. And uh, this is just a different style of mat. This is what we call a waffle mat. It's a little more aggressive, but it does have a leveling board on the front of it that would kind of, if there's any really bad spots, um, we could level those back out. And then this back part just kind of gives it a smooth finish as well. But um, there's all kinds of different products out there, and you really have to find the one that works best for you. But um, we like the Coco Mops. They do a really good job uh, giving the field a nice, smooth, finished look.